Okay, lesson seven. It's the ambiguous case of sign law. Uh, first and foremost, do you guys know what the word ambiguous means? It just means confusing. You're unsure. If you're feeling ambiguous, you're feeling unsure. Okay, and in math, you should never feel unsure about what's expected. Um, so, with the sign law, if they give you a certain uh, information, the, um, you can end up being in an ambiguous situation and you can end up being able to draw two different triangles from the given information. For this workbook, we're not doing this, so you can cross. You can just put a big slash out of that. We're not doing this. The next page, you can put a big slash out of that. We're not doing this. You put a big slash out of that. And we're not doing this. And all the way down to, a to page 201, we're going to cross out all that. And we are going to put a big fat star on this. <laughs> okay, so right there is crucial. Okay, so that is the entirety of the lesson. Um, so what I'm going to have you guys do is flip into the very back of your book. There's blank paper. All the way to the back of your book, there's blank paper. And we're going to just take notes like old school. Okay, so at the very back of your book, there's these notes pages. There's like, s I think, 10 blank sheets. So just find a blank sheet that you can refer to later. And you're just going to put sign law, ambiguous case, and we're going to put some notes down. And you're going to have to draw. So this will take about 15 or 20 minutes. I have straight edges up here if that's something you're interested in. Uh, if you want to draw sloppy lines, that's okay too. If you want to use a bank card, ID card, credit card, that's cool as well. Yeah, all you need is a straight edge and you'll be okay. Okay, so title of the page, sign law ambiguous case. And you're going to start here. Okay, so what we're going to do, and I'll just, before we get started, I'll just um, tell you the situation. So again, the situation is going to be sine law, of course. It's going to be side, side, angle. And if you read it in reverse, it helps you really remember it, right? Read it in reverse. You'll never forget that, but it's the side-side angle situation, the donkey situation, right? If you read it backwards, right? So that helps you remember it. And then when you go to construct the information that they give you, always just start like this because they're going to they have to give you an angle. Okay, so put the angle like this every time, every time they give you information and no picture given, there's no picture. They're like, okay, given this angle and these two sides, um, you know, what is the angle measure of the one they want? Or what is the measure? Yeah, so always just start your triangles like that, and then we'll be okay. So let's take a look at this first situation. So if the angle they give you is acute, and then they're going to give you, of course, the two sides that make up the angle, right? An angle always has the two sides that make it up, right? Okay, so what we're interested in is the opposite side. So let's take a look at this opposite side. If that opposite side A is smaller than the height of the triangle, you don't, you don't have a triangle. See how this arm, think of this arm like it can swing like a pendulum back and forth like on the, fa the father clock, you know those swinging pendulums? Think about this opposite side. If it's smaller than the height of the triangle, you never get a triangle. So no triangle exists. And that will be one of the situations. You'll do your sign law calculations during the test, and then your calculator will actually give you an error. Okay, so we will... We will talk about this shortly, okay? Calculator will give you an error. 
So yeah, we're just going to be copying down these situations. So just let me know when you're good. You're good? So we'll move on since you're good. Just kidding. We're going to wait for others. This is the hardest part as a teacher. You're just like. This is water today. Ran out of beet juice. I'll make some more tonight. Need that stuff. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know that if you're really stressed out and lots in your life, um, your brain will use up m a lot of vitamin C because of all the adrenaline in your body. So if you feel really stressed lots, you should get lots of vitamin C. Yeah, fun fact. <laughs> yeah, your body can only absorb so much. Okay, we good on this one? Okay, so let's take a look at this next one. Okay, so if the angle is acute, and they're talking about the given angle down in the corner, if they gi the angle they give you is acute, and the opposite side is the same as the height, well, there's only one possible triangle, and it's the right angle triangle. And this really, this really is no, this has really no bearing on the lesson, and you know this situation, so you don't really have to worry about this one. Okay. So the previous situation, that opposite side was smaller than the height. Now this situation, the opposite side is the height. And that's a right angle triangle, so we don't really have to worry about that one. It's the next one that's interesting, I think. You guys good on this one? Okay, let's take a look at this next one. Okay, so this next one here. If the opposite side is greater than B, then only one possible triangle exists. And the way that you have to think about this one, maybe I'll give you guys some time to write it down and then I'll talk about it. Okay, so for this one, the opposite side is greater than the given side and or the side that's with the angle. So when you look at this opposite side, if you were trying to imagine some other triangle, then we'd have to move this arm. And I'll try to move this without changing the height of it. But what's going to happen is it's going to swing around here and like it doesn't make a triangle perfectly no matter where you swing it. Okay, try to keep this. So if I swing it over here, like it's past this and it, it, it doesn't make a triangle, right? It would have to be like this to make another triangle. And it would have to be like this. And that's going to be the next situation that we're going to see. So if the opposite side is longer than this uh, side with the given angle, then you just got this one triangle and you'll just do your normal sine law and life is okay. This is just, this, this would just be like a normal sine law situation. So it's, I do believe it's the next one that we get into this 
two triangle possibility. All right, so people are done writing. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Okay, this is the one where you get these, this is this ambiguous case. And it's when the uh, opposite side, like we've always been doing this A side, this, it's the opposite side. The given angle is capital A, and the opposite side of that given angle, it's smaller than B, this side that is adjacent to the capital A. It's smaller than B, but it's greater than the height of the triangle. So you could actually swing in this radial, it's like a, it's like a pendulum arm, you could swing it in and you could actually form another triangle. So when you do your sine law, there's two possibilities. So, and I'll highlight them for you. So there's this triangle here. This is the one possibility. And then the other possibility is if you colored in everything. So the whole deal would be the other possibility. So it's like the triangle that you're used to and then this other possibility. So maybe I'll just, instead of saying one up there, I'll say other. This, this other possibility. Okay, so this is just sort of like... Um, why this works and then I'll actually show you a nice little trick that uh, you don't even really need all this information but just trying to I never like to just give you a rule to remember without sort of explaining what the heck is happening because then it just is like why am I doing this so are we okay on this everyone else other than her okay okay and then this situation, I'm not even really going to worry about these obtuse situations because all the questions I've seen, they always give you a, so let's just not even worry about this. Let's not worry about this. Okay, now this is the notes that are on your page 201. So you can go back to that page 201. And I just have a couple things highlighted here and then on the next page I will compare those highlighted colors to what they're talking about because sometimes when you read this it feels like a lot of like verbal you know what so it's like if the side opposite the given angle is greater than the side opposite the required angle there's only one solution okay so let's take a look at that one and this is Class example one. So on your page, you haven't got it constructed. So you're going to have to do that. It's the page after 201. That's two, 202. Yep. Class example uh, 1A. Okay, so it says calculate angle C in triangle ABC where angle B is 56. And then they give you these other measures C and B of the sides. So when I constructed this, and please just follow the order, you start with this angle, okay? So start with the angle that's given, right here. Start with angle. Because most of you guys are able to sketch, you know, what a 56 degree angle might look like. You know, you're not, it's not going to be a right angle, it's going to be a little bit shorter than a right angle. And it's just past halfway because it's bigger than 45. So you can get, give yourself a nice estimate 
of what that 56 will look like. Okay? And they called that angle B. So that's why I put B56. And that's literally how I started this construction. I just started with an angle like this. 56. I just did a 56 degree angle. Okay, and then it told me that C is 10 and B is 12. So I have no idea where vertex C is, so I, I didn't do that next. I did this opposite side B next because 12 has to be sh straight across the angle that they gave me. And now they're like, okay, well, find angle C. So like, if I put C down here, that would be okay too. It doesn't matter where you put it, the other two. Okay, as long as the opposite side of where you put C goes 10. So I, I chose C up top. It doesn't matter if you put it down in the corner. It doesn't matter. It's just rotated. As long as you have 10 opposite of it. Because little c goes with big C. Right? You can see the green arrow or the green line. Okay. So now once you have the triangle constructed, you go back into the notes, which is on a test, your brain. So this is what it takes for studying. And I've seen this, I've seen this ambiguous case on the final at various schools, and I've seen it on the unit test. So this is marks. Okay, so it says the side opposite the given angle, so I highlighted that in yellow, the side opposite the given angle, so that's 12. The, the angle 56 was given. The side opposite the given angle is greater than the side opposite the required angle. Is it greater? Yes, 12 is greater than 10. So this one's only going to have one solution. The side opposite the given angle is longer than the side opposite the required angle. So this one's only going to have one solution. You could solve this with a normal sine law and your life is just normal. Everyone, I think, pretty much mastered sine law. You just cross multiply and you're good. So now let's jump into B. So let's start with the construction of B always start with the angle that they give you. So they've, you ha and they have to give you an angle, okay? And they'll always give you two sides, okay? Remember that, side, side, angle, or the reverse, okay? So QPR is 41. So notice I put 41 at the middle letter, which is P. So 41 is at vertex P. That's what I know. Now this R and Q, those can be flipped. It doesn't matter. For me, I just chose R at the top. I don't know why, I just did. It doesn't matter. You could uh, put R down there, it'll just be rotated. Okay, so there's R and Q. And because they gave me R, Q. So uh, when I did that, I was like, okay, well, let's put R up there, Q down there, and put a three here. That's what I kind of did. I was like, okay, R, Q is three, so P's down here. So then I drew this line. I was like, okay, R and Q, so that's 3. And then this PR 4.2, so I was like, okay, so since I put R up here, PR 4.2 is here. And I have all the information done. I got, my s I got a triangle sketched out. I got one possible triangle. There could be two. Maybe this triangle actually doesn't even exist. I'm not sure. I just put it down on paper. Now I get back to my notes. And I'm like, okay. The side opposite the given angle is less. So notice the difference there. Up above it said greater. This one says less. The side opposite the given angle is less than the side opposite the required angle. Okay. What do they want me to solve for? Calculate PQR. So they want me to find Q. Okay. The side opposite the given angle 3, 41, the side opposite the given angle is less than the side opposite the required angle. So how many possibilities are there here? Or 2 or none. 
two or zero solutions. So this, with this information, there's ambiguity. Ambiguity means confusion. I don't know if there's a couple of triangles with this orientation or this triangle actually doesn't even exist. Okay? And that's all you need to do for class example one. Okay? Class example two, we're actually going to do this. Okay? Okay, so start with the angle that they gave us, and you sketch out a 50 degree angle. So I always just draw a horizontal line, and then I draw a 50. So 45 would be like, okay, there's 90. 45 would be like half of that. So just a little bit past 45. And I have no idea about the sizes of those sides right now. I just sketched out a bit of a triangle here. Got 50 in there. Okay, and that's capital A. Then it says little a is 7.5. Okay, so that's this guy. 7.5. Now, that 7.5, it could very well swing in like this. You know, that's very well a possibility. But I'm not going to quite worry about that right now. I just draw like one possibility. It's just like, you know, in a problem solving situation, just try something. I'm just going to try this. Okay. So now. I've used that. Now this C, 9.5. So does it matter where I put the 9.5? No, it could go on the bottom, it could go on the left. Why don't we just put it over here, 9.5. And that means that this bottom right is capital C. Okay, now back in the notes, how does it say? With the yellow highlight, it would be like the side opposite the given angle is less than the side opposite the required angle. So how many, or what's the situation here? You could have two solutions or, or none. Okay, so let's jump into the sine law. So the math really is quite straightforward with these. Why did I put an E? So sine 50 goes with 7.5, and sine C goes with 9.5. I want to solve for sine C, so the 9.5 has got to move up top left. So 9.5 times the sine of 50 over 7.5 equals sine of C. I make sure my calculator is in the degree mode. I figure out this answer. I don't need brackets or anything like that because it's just timesing and dividing. The order is not important. So I just go 9.5 times sine 50. If my calculator prompts a bracket for sine, I'll make sure I close the bracket on 50. Divide 7.5. I'm probably going to get some random decimal, right? 0.5. Nine seven zero. Is there a fourth? Like this? Like this? Okay, perfect. Okay, now just a word on the ratio for sine in general. Do you guys remember what the formula for sine is in general? Opposite divided by hypotenuse, right? So sine of any angle is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. And in a triangle that's right angled, the hypotenuse, is it longer than the opposite? Is it always longer than the opposite? So then what can you say about this fraction? If the hype is always bigger than the op, what can you say about that fraction? 
So this is always less than a whole, right? It's always less than 1. Do you agree with that? Now, when you're doing some of these questions, if you do everything properly, and this guy right here is greater than 1, you're going to get a calculator error, and you can probably just assume that this triangle has no solution. Okay, so go into the assignment, please. Flip to 5A. And just put a note of that on 5A. Okay, go to 5A in the assignment. And then put sine capital D, because that's what you're going to be solving for, is going to be greater than 1. Okay, I'll write it on the whiteboard. Sine capital D greater than 1, therefore no solution. Okay, put that on your uh, 5A. But you're going to actually do the question, and then you're going to prove this to yourself. Okay? So that's just a little word on sine. And that's actually true for cos as well. So the ratios for sine and cos have to always be less than 1. Because the denominator is the height. And there you go. So now we can solve for C using second function. 0.9703. Okay, so 76 degrees is one of the answers. Do you remember that this was either two solutions or none? Okay, so because we didn't get the calculator error, there's going to be two solutions. So then for this 76, we will also use the quadrant 2 version. Remember, sine is positive in the top two quadrants. So there's the 76. And what's the other one that goes with it? Over in quadrant two, remember the cast rule, sine is positive. So the reference angle is 76 here. So what's that rotational angle? 180 minus 76, so 104. Okay, so the other answer is 104. Okay. So now when we go back to this triangle, see the way that I've drawn it right now? Which way have I drawn it? So C would be going with 76 right now. Do you see that? So C, it, the way I've drawn it, it's acute. C looks acute here. So that has to be the 76 version. So then what would the v uh, top angle up there be? So up there it would be 180 minus 50 minus 76. So, uh, thank you. Okay, so there's one of the triangles. Mm, next button on this. Please contact the office. So now right next to it, draw the other one. Whoops. So we're going to keep that 9.5. And then we're going to keep the 50 degree angle but now we need an angle of what 104 down in the corner so that's going to look like um, come on that's going to look like this god that's so ugly <laughs> so now right here is the 104, and then up here would be 180 minus 50 minus the 104. So 130 minus 104 is 26, and those are the two possible triangles with the given information. Question. Yeah. I just wanted to keep the 9.5 where it was. Question. Um, so the like, unit exam, like the final exam, would they give me access to like solve triangles or just class specific questions? Um, I'll speak to that next week when I 
take a better look at the test. How about that? But generally, they'll be like, you know, use the sine law to find the answer to this required angle. And if you only put one of the angles, you get like one out of two, usually. Because you need to realize that this situation, there's two. You know, I've seen at another school where they had this uh, on the written response and for the final exam, and they asked you to construct both triangles. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. So start your drawing, start your sketch. And on this one, I'll actually show you a nice little trick that you wouldn't even have to, uh, you wouldn't even have to memorize this uh, opposite side being shorter. I'll show you a nice little trick with the 180 rule, the 180 rule. So it's actually quite powerful and it just, it really makes all this quite easier. Okay, so I'll start with your angle A at 50 degrees. You guys got that done? Okay, so we got our 50 degree angle. Okay, so there's A. And 9.5 is across that. Good. There's 9.5. And C, where did we put it last time? On the bottom. So capital C and here's 7.5. Now what does the note say about this one? It's greater, right? So it should only have one solution. Okay. So let's imagine that you tried to do the two solution stuff for it. And let's see what would happen. Okay. So sine 50 goes with 9.5. And sine C goes with 7.5. 7.5 comes up here. Get rid of that. Second function sine, all this crap here. And you're off to the races for C. See how I did all that? 7.5 times sine of 50 divided by 9.5. Get stupid calculator. 7.5 times sine of 50 divided by 9.5. I got 0 0.6 something. Second function sine that answer. I'm getting 37 degrees. Okay. Okay, so let's imagine you think that there's two possibilities for this answer. Okay, so what would the what would the other one be? It would be 180 minus 37. Do you agree? And you get 143. Okay, so now let's take a look at what these triangles would look like without even having to draw them. Okay, so if this one's 37. That's the one that we like. That's the acute one. What would this one be up here? 180 minus 50 minus 37. You get 92, 93. Okay, awesome. You see it? Okay, now let's imagine we try to do this with 143. Okay, so the three angles would be 50, 143, and some other angle, right? And what do we have to do with all those angles? Add them all up, and it should equal 180. So you add them all up, and 50 and 143 is 193, and you're like, what? How could you have this happen? <laughs> you're, you'd have to have a negative angle, which doesn't exist. So that's a nice way to prove for yourself how this will work. Okay. 
use the 180 triangle rule because if you're going to break that, then there's no possibility. So this one, one solution, okay, and that's it. All right, that's it for me. Um, in the homework, number one is just like when do you, do you when is the ambiguous case going to happen? So that's like copying down notes. Number two, they want you to just decide whether there's going to be one solution or two solutions. So that might be worth the exercise. Um, but pretty much uh, three, five, and six is your homework. And if you want a challenge, do number four. Okay, so homework three, five, and six. And challenge is four. Okay, so that's it. You got uh, plenty of time to work. I did good today. Only 36 minutes.